Hey, hi. Well, <laughs> think, think of it like this. You know, uh, if your whole knowledge, you know, is, is a, like a building and your basement is this, and if your basement is not strong, your building is going to come collapse. Yeah, right? most definitely. So yes. Math, math is at the center of it. That's cool. it. Cool. And I believe uh, the other subjects are also important. But math being the primary one, because a lot of calculations are involved, uh, what other subjects are also important okay, in laying the foundation of your knowledge in what you do? Yeah, uh, well, of course, physics is very much also at the center of it. But um, again, physics and math, so they sort of go hand, hand in hand, right? Mm -hmm. Math is, is, I believe it's a language. If you don't know math, you cannot do chemistry, you cannot do, you know, physics, none of those. Yeah. So the, the physics is great, great at, you know, like learning, making sense of things, but um, in order to get there, you have to work it out. Cool. You have to work the math. Yeah. Right? So, um, again, these conceptual things like, oh, of course, of course, if you want to be a nuclear engineer, you have to know some physics, mm -hmm. but first you have to know math. <laughs> Indeed. So to the kid who is always sitting at the back and saying, I don't need this. Well, you do. <laughs> you well, do. Yeah, that's actually what, yeah, exactly. That's, that would be one of my um, other um, sort of like recommendation to people who are watching. I also been through that. I was like, where am I going to use this? What am I going <laughs> to make you know, sense of this? You do. Believe me, at some point in your life, if you are working as an engineer or, you know, some sort of like, uh, you know, a technology uh, based uh, job, you will use it. So don't worry, just just keep going. Yeah. So just keep going, right? Shall not, we shall not uh, be held back by our difficulties that we see right in front of us. We should look beyond that and keep trying. I mean, YouTube has got plenty of resources. Our channel has got some as well. And uh, just to let the viewers know, we are going to have Errol do a little mini series with us where I will get schooled in higher mathematics. So watch out for that, yeah? yeah. Okay, just one more question before we call it a day. Okay, are okay. there any ethical considerations or guidance to your profession? For example, the doctors, they mm -hmm. have the Hippocratic Oath. So to mm -hmm. nuclear engineers or nuclear scientists have a uh, ethical considerations or guidances to uh, help you guys along. Right, right. Um, so um, the short answer is no. <laughs> but um, there were some considerations in the past. I believe in the States, uh, there was an association was trying to uh, sort of develop um, an oath so much very much like what you just said um but uh, it just doesn't work because our line of job doesn't directly affect people like the doctors do so you don't have to really get into the morality of the job right away so what we do we create a system what's called a quality assurance mm. so when you do you know when you do a design work a job some other people are checking it or it's or we do peer review uh, you know work so uh, we have to make sure that what we are doing is correct. And for that, actually, it's so funny you asked that because uh, I remember I read somewhere that in the, I think in the beginning of 20, like 2000, they were also worried about, uh, maybe even earlier, about uh, the nuclear bombs. Yes. So just because of that, they wanted to make, they wanted to make a, a, an oath for engineers to say like, you know, you have to be careful. You have to sort of like make sure you use your knowledge properly and everything mm. but it, it is very hard to control indeed so i don't believe that it can it is practical mm -mm. Um, however there might be some associations or, or chambers or you know things like that that within them they do some sort of us and that's just like very specific but generally the answer is no no okay. we don't have that cool, but cool. we are uh working for the peaceful use of nuclear energy mm -mm. and that's that's all uh, what's important and i don't we don't do nuclear bombs there's no <laughs> <laughs> nobody nobody's working on that so um there are regulating you know agencies that are checking everything very strictly mm -mm. so 
yeah and nuclear is very sustainable and very clean so it is the uh, it's very environmentally friendly so i actually uh, sort of i want to encourage the young generation also start looking into these kind of jobs that helps the environment cool cool and uh, yeah nuclear energy really has got a lot of uh, positive uses like the most common one is just uh, you know in the nearest hospital where you get your x-ray yeah <laughs> that is also a form of uh, nuclear well, yeah 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 with the x-ray you know doctors can only see your your bones right but mm. with the uh if you if you include the the what's called the actually the posit, positron emission the they are combining with the, the scans together and they can get a very detailed view of your uh you know your tissues and and everything so they can easily identify if you have a you know a cancer and a, a disease or, or something like that Mm. So and it's been it's been in practice for so long. It's yes. the best practice now. Yes. yes. Yeah. So uh, actually, I'm going to give a presentation um, uh, in uh, about this sort of like the non-electric usage of nuclear mm. uh, later. So I, I, we might maybe share that as well in the in the channel if anybody is interested. Cool. Cool. We look forward to that. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much for spending your precious time with us on hey hi conversations we i believe uh what we have shared today and what you have shared today will be really beneficial to our viewers so to our viewers do look out for a new series that is going to come out where errol is going to be teaching me new stuff okay or stuff that i have quite long forgotten a long while ago <laughs> and uh yeah it'll be a mini series and so do look out for that in the meantime We'd like to bring a big uh, round of applause to Errol and thank you very much um, for joining us today. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. But I actually have a question to our viewers, maybe for uh, they can reply that uh, in, the, in the comments or maybe we can talk about it uh, in our next video. You know, we talk about nuclear uh, energy, but there are two types of, uh, you know, uh, way of we sort of generate or convert energy, right? One is fission, the other is fusion. Uh -huh. So we know that uh, in the sun, the fusion is happening, right, at the moment. And, and we all are familiar that a sunlight that comes from the sun to Earth arrives here in at eight minutes. I would like to ask that the light arriving to our planet, how old it is? How is old is that light? Minutes old? Yeah, is it eight minutes old or is it older than that? So let's see, let's see uh, if we are gonna get any uh, right answers on this, and maybe in next video I can give the answer. Cool. So in the comments below, in the comment section below, do try to answer Arrow's question, even if you had to cheat and ask Google. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it would be something really interesting because I really never thought about that. So yeah. Yeah. So, let's see. Let's see the answers. Cool, cool. So until the next time, thank you very much for joining me once again. It's Wei Tiang here and Errol all the way from Turkey. And until the next time, see you. Take care and remember to stay safe. Bye-bye. Hey, hi.